This video is not a tutorial. Do not use this video for learning purposes. If you want to learn to fly, do it professionally at a registered, qualified flying school like I am. Hi guys, this video is not gonna be in the vlog series or it's not part of the vlog series. This is going to be about me just talking to you about preparing for the skills test that I'm gonna do for my private pilot's license and also my thoughts leading up to like the last few months. Um, I made this video because I haven't actually, there's so many people who ask online uh, and on the forums that I'm on, oh, what, what to expect? I feel awful, blah, 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 blah. But this video and the videos that come after this, when I have passed, might help you guys to sort of realize what thought process you do go through, because I'm currently going through it. I've already had one skills test canceled, so what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about the maneuvers that I'm practicing, we're gonna talk through them, and in a way, it's effectively gonna be revision for me as well. We're gonna do all our stalls, all our general handling. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about nav, because that, in a way, is another half of the skills test that I'll be able to do in another video. Yeah, we're just gonna go through all those bits and pieces. Like I said, it's not part of the vlog series. This is purely part of the pilot training series, I guess, or, or just the, the story of learning to get my pilot's license. So if you like vlogs, then subscribe. And if you like learning to fly or anything like that, and you like travel and history documentaries, I make loads of those, please hit that subscribe button as well. So let's get on with this video anyway. This is what we've been doing. This is like the timeline since I did my cross country navigation qualifier. After that, we straight away went into consolidating solo time, getting that up so we had the right amount of hours so you're legally allowed to, to pass. Um, and then brushing up, ready for the skills test itself. I'm gonna try and remember off the top of my head here the maneuvers that we have to do. So we start off, number one, with the clean stall. So we start all of these maneuvers with a check called a hazel check, which is a memnomic that we use for height, so sufficient to recover. Airframe, so we make sure that our wings and everything are clean, which means flaps up. Security, which means gyros, caged, harnesses tight, windows and everything all tied down, loose articles and everything all okay. Engine, which is temperatures and pressures. Make sure you've got your fuel selected. If you want to, just a bit of carb heat, just to make sure you get rid of any carb ice off the carburetor. Location, which we use a small A, B, C, D, so A for aerodromes, B for built up areas, C for controlled airspace, and D for danger areas. Then we'll do our last little bit, which is L, lookout. So turn 90 degrees one way and have a good look, turn 90 degrees the other way and have a good look. Now we're ready to do our clean wing stall. So what I'm doing here is pulling out the carb heat, then dropping off the revs and slowly, slowly pulling up the nose. And it doesn't look very drastic in here, but believe me guys, this is quite an upward nose attitude. Uh, and you'll start to hear the stall warner starting to cut in. And at that point, I'll drop the nose a little bit and then carb heat cold, full throttle, right rudder. Now, as you've probably seen here, I've probably dropped the nose a little bit too far. And later on in this lesson, Jeremy, my instructor, said, right, we're gonna do a few more of those, not happy with them. He's very, very particular, but that's what I want. It's uh, absolutely brilliant to have such a great instructor. Then we have what I'd call, when you're in the circuit and you're turning base uh, and you're turning onto final, sometimes you're gonna have one or two stages of flat. So then we did that particular stall and also that was a turning stall. So this is the procedure that I've learned for that. Having done all my turning checks and everything yet again, just to make sure everything's okay, what we now do is actually configure the plane as if we are turning base and about to turn final. So we'll put our carb heat on yet again. We'll pull the engine revs back to about 1500 RPM in this aircraft and then pull the nose up so our airspeed goes to within the white arc. Once we've done that, we'll put one stage of flap in, which I'm doing right now, and we'll just let the nose drop a bit, and then we'll put our second stage of flap in. Now what I'll do, I'll just readjust my RPM and then we'll enter the turn, turn more, and then start pulling back on the yoke. As you can see yet again, high nose attitude, sloppy controlling and decreasing airspeed. 
The difference about the stool recovery procedure here is we stay within the term when we hear the stool warner and put carb heat and full throttle right rudder. As soon as we've stabilised the airspeed back up at 70 knots, we'll then level the wings and then reconfigure the aircraft back so it's safely and then in real life we'd probably go round and do another circuit and then try and get in again. Then we've got a full flat stall. Once again we set up the aircraft by safely adding two stages of flap, turning on to what would maybe f be f turning on to what would maybe be final, adding that third stage of flap and then as we come into land, oh dear, we start pulling the nose up too far. Yet again we've got slow and decreasing airspeed, high nose attitude, sloppy and unresponsive controls and then of course the dreaded stall warner. In this configuration as soon as you hear the stall warner, dip the nose as you would do normally, carb heat cold, full throttle, right rudder, get rid of that one stage of drag flap as soon as possible. Get the aircraft so it's going at the speed for its best rate of climb, so 70 knots, wait until you've got a positive rate of climb and then get rid of the second stage of flap and then the first stage of flap in increments. By the way guys, these are what I've been taught. I'm not saying these are the verbatim things. I imagine instructors have different ways of teaching things. I mean, I know that from the fact that my instructor, who I know is a very good instructor, and I have a massive amount of respect for him, I imagine another instructor's got a slightly different way of doing it. And I know that people on the internet can start moaning that that's not the right way to do it or not. Uh, if you've got another way, then just comment it below. Be nice to each other. The flying community is one of those communities that's slightly different in the fact that all we're ever trying to do is learn from the mistakes of others so we survive. That's it. It's not about pointing the finger and blaming, saying you, you're wrong. It's about trying to survive. So uh, anyway, we're going to stay around the runway at the moment and then we're going to go through um, a few different landings. So let's have a look at some of these. So what we're doing, we're coming in for a four mile final here, straight into 06 at Duxford. And I'm just going through what we call our bumfitch tests. I think we've just got a new QFE altimeter setting there. So we're just putting that in now. Bumfitch test, it's another memnomic to allow us to remember to check our brakes, our undercarriage, if we have retractable undercarriage, our mixture, our fuel, our radios, our engine temperatures and pressures, our DI indicator, that's our direction indicator, and yet again our altitude, and also pop a little bit of carb heat on as well. I'm now getting the plane into the landing configuration, which means carb heat on, revs back to 1500, nose up, so we drop the airspeed into the white arc, and then we can start adding our stages of flap. The thing I like to do is to have my three stages of flap pretty much by one and a half to two miles final, then I can call final, then it's all about trimming the aircraft for the best glide speed, which is 70 knots. So once you've got it to 70 knots and you've done all those other jobs, all you need to do is aim the aircraft at the end of the runway. I know guys this sounds easy, but last week I had some awful landings, and this week I had a few better ones I think. At a certain point in time you won't look at the altimeter anymore, all you'll do is look at the runway, then you'll look at your speed. You'll look at the runway, then you'll look at your speed. Constantly trying to nail 70 knots, so if the speed starts to drop, push the nose down. If the speed starts to get too quick, pull the nose up a little bit. If you think you're entering the dreadful situation of landing in a field, add more RPM. RPM effectively aims the landing point of your aircraft further away or closer to you. As soon as you know you've made the runway, completely cut the throttle and then pull the aeroplane up so we're flying basically along the runway but not touching the ground. What we're trying to do is dissipate as much energy out of the aircraft as possible. What we really want to hear is the stall warner just before we land. This is a touch and go landing, so as soon as we've done that, off we go again. Now we've got a glide approach landing, so this is when we don't have an engine, we've got no engine power, and I think on the day that I recorded this, uh, there was also very little wind as well, which can make these quite tricky. So during the examination, I'm told that the examiner is going to pull the power at a certain point when we're on the downwind leg. Now what we're trying to do is train for the eventuality where we have an engine failure when we're actually in the circuit. In which case, what we do when we're actually doing this as a training exercise is we'll put our carb heat on and then Jeremy, my instructor, will say, look, when do you think you can actually make it? So what we do is engine failure. Straight away, I'm trimming for the best glide speed, which is 70 knots. Constantly, all you do is you look at the end of that runway. Look at the end of the runway. Now, as it's a day with very little wind, 
the problem that a lot of student pilots can come up against, or so I'm told, is that they don't add enough flap early enough. These planes love to glide. That's what they do. Uh, as you can see there, Jeremy's held his thumb up to say, remember to radio through that you've got a problem, a mayday. So you radio through something like mayday, 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 Duxford information, classic wings 2-1, engine failure on the downwind, doing a forced landing on runway 06, and then literally leave it. You've got to get this plane down, really. That's what you've got to do. So every time you think, right, I'm more sure that I'm going to make the runway, you can add another stage of flap. So what I'm doing, I'm pretty sure I can make it. So you can see the runway there is in a completely different position. I'm now telling Jeremy this is part of the exam to brace. And what we're going to do when we actually leave the aircraft, he's going to cock his door open now. He's going to leave away from the propeller and away from the aircraft. I'm now very sure that we can make this because I've now put a third stage of flap in. But say if we weren't, I could side slip the aircraft, I could weave a little bit as well, just try and get rid of some of that height and then get the aircraft in. I've got to say I'm pretty pleased with this glide approach actually, especially on a day with such little wind. I usually prefer to have a little bit of a breeze to work with just to slow the aircraft down. It just gives you a little bit more control. Uh, it sounds sort of counterintuitive. I imagine a lot of you don't think we want that, but there we go. Anyway, so yet again, dissipate the pressure, hold the nose up, get rid of as much speed as possible, try and stall the aircraft and boom, down we go, off for another touch and go and a successful glide approach. Now I'll show you a grass short field landing. Um, so we'll be putting the plane into a configuration where we're trying to come in at sort of 62 knots rather than 70. And when we get down as well, we're gonna jam the brakes on. Here we follow the exact same procedures that we follow in the run up to the landing. So we do all our bump fitch tests and we'd also put our flaps in the increments that we did with the aircraft at a safe speed so it doesn't hurt the flaps at all. The only difference is, is that we're not trimming the aircraft this time for a 70 knot glide speed, we're trimming it for a 62 knot glide speed. Although, and let's face it, the airspeed indicators aren't great, so just try and get it so it's hovering around the 60 limit. The reason being is that a lot of farm strips and grass airfields tend to have shorter runways than tarmac ones, and you don't really want to be putting the nose of your Cessna into a hedge. So what we do is we slow the aircraft down on approach, as you can see, we've got a couple of aircraft there just holding off at the taxi holding point. And just the same again, really, as soon as you get over the threshold, cut the power, hold the nose up, and try and get rid of some of that speed. The good thing about grass field landings is you can be a little bit harder, or so I'm told. Uh, as soon as you get down, bang those brakes on, try and get it all going. If you're gonna do a go around, don't bring all the flaps back up. Just bring the flaps up so you've got one stage of flaps still in, as if you're doing a normal short field takeoff. Next, we're gonna have a look at the go around. So this is when we're coming into land and we think, oh, something's not right, we go around. So this is the go around procedure. Sorry to tell you this guys, but I haven't filmed one. I've looked through all my archive and I haven't got any. Just see it as very similar to the recovery from a stall with three stages of flap. Apart from this time, rather than waiting for the vertical speed intake indicator to go up, you wait until you get a nice height before you start retracting your flaps. I think I've remembered everything that we've done around near the aerodrome. <clears throat> Apart from a low level poor weather circuit and also a circuit with full flaps, but come on, carry on Jimmy. After that, we'll go off and with cloud cover permitting, we can get up to 3000 feet. We can then start doing our steep turns and things like that. So a steep descending turn without power is the maneuver we'd use if we actually had an engine fire. So in this case, the engine fire is on what we'd say is on the left-hand side of the engine. So in this stage, you're trying to blow the fire out by turning into it. You're gonna do a 45 degree angle of bank and then try to keep your airspeed at about 90 knots. That's what you're sort of aiming at. Anything further than that, you're gonna start sort of getting a bit uncontrollable and anything slower, obviously you risk a stall. Once the fire is theoretically put out, Jeremy, my instructor, will say, right, level out at 1,500 feet or something like that, and that's the end of that exercise. We do this left and right a few times every time we go up. But then we've got steep level turns, so this is a 45 degree turn, and turning onto a desired heading of the instructor or the examiner without losing more or less 100 feet. So similar to the steep descending turn, I suppose, in a way, because we are doing a steep turn, what we do in this one is we don't want to lose altitude. We want to try and keep our altitude where it is. 
So the way of doing that is to bank the aircraft into about a 30 degree bank first, and then before fully committing to the 45 degree turn, just add another 100 RPM of engine speed, and then try and just keep pulling the plane so it's at about 90 knots, and then Jeremy will say, right, I want you to roll out on say 090, and you have to anticipate that rollout by about 15 to 20 degrees. And that's basically the end of that exercise. Now we've got a slightly different, now we've got a slight, now we've got a different exercise as well. This is called recovery from an unusual attitude. So Jeremy will get the plane so it's going down in an unusual attitude and then he'll just make, he'll make me look down so I can't see and then he'll say, right, look up and recover. There's multiple different ways of getting out this because he'll either put us into a spiral dive or he'll put us into a stall. So really, if it's a spiral dive, bring the engine back, level the wings, and then try and get rid of the speed, uh, and you know, get the plane level again and then recover. And if it's obviously in a stall, yet again, just try and get that nose down, get the air speed up, and recover from the stall like you normally would. I'm 100% sure that we've forgotten a few of the moves here, but that's pretty much the main bunch of them. Now I'm going to leave the next few exercises because they're a little bit more complicated for the next video. So that's going to be an EFARTO, so that's uh, engine failure after takeoff. We'll also do a PFL, which is a practice force landing from altitude. And also we'll do tracking to and from a VOR beacon radial and also getting the reading off a DME, which is a distance measuring equipment beast. So how do I feel at the moment? How do I feel having already had a skills test cancelled, uh, which was a very stressful day. I got to Duxford at half past 12 to meet my examiner at two. It just so transpired my examiner didn't get onto the aerodrome or back from what he was doing. But he had to do an aerobatics course and either he, he didn't know about it. Somehow it transpired that he didn't get there till half four, by which time I'd pre-flighted the plane, I'd done all my touch drills um, and all that sort of stuff. And it was just, I don't know. It was just one of those things where I'd been waiting for four or five hours by then uh, and I could still have done my skills test. We had quite hazy weather, but nothing on a nav that I'd get worried about. We had pretty much 10 kilometers of visibility uh, and I'm happy to fly in that, but I was tired. I didn't want to hire the plane. I didn't want to get my examiner up in it and I didn't want to waste their time all for me to fail purely because I was tired and worked up. So it was my call and it's almost part of the examination as to whether you've got the pilot knowledge to call whether you commit to flight or not. Because it's one thing my instructor has said, he said it's one thing being down on the ground, looking up at the sky saying, oh, I wish I was up there. It's quite another being up in the plane, looking down at the runway thinking, oh, I wish I was down there. <laughs> and I have been in a couple of situations like that when I've been on solos where my instructor said, look, I know we've got a fairly chunky crosswind today, or it's quite blustery, but I know you've got the skills to be able to fly this plane and land it. And also, there will be times where you take off in good weather and you have to land in conditions that aren't exactly desirable. So it's good that they, they've given us that sort of, you know, they've given you that baptism of fire as well. That being said, my instructor will also say, today, you're not gonna learn anything. So, you know, the weather's just a bit too much and we've done that bit already. So you're not gonna learn anything. It's very good that your instructor doesn't put you through doesn't make you go up for the sake of it so they can get basically get paid for hours. And that definitely doesn't happen with my instructor at Tuxford, it's absolutely brilliant. That's how I feel, I mean, at the moment, well, how I feel at the moment is I do feel ready, I'm very happy with my navs, I'm happy with what I'm, what I'm doing when it comes to uh, all the general handling and my landings, I'm really happy with my landings now. Uh, I've just got them down so the, the plane's almost sort of doing 40 miles an hour when it just kisses the runway and you just get that stall warning just before you land. I, I sort of went through a spate of doing good landings and then just awful landings and now I'm doing good landings again and I'm sure after I passed I'll have some awful landings. Um, as long as I survive them and the plane's okay, I'm happy. Um, but that's how I feel and there have been times, there have been times where I've felt really down about flying. I felt I felt like I've gone backwards sometimes, but I've stuck at it. And you know what? The best thing I've done is put the GoPro up in the plane so I can come home after a bad lesson, watch what I've done wrong. And the good thing is you start to pick up, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that bit now that I keep getting wrong or, or that little bit. So now I know that I double check, I triple check um, my diversions and things. And I'll talk to you about my diversions and my navigation planning in the next video. Um, in the next one about this pilot stuff and then hopefully I'll be able to do a video about what my skills test was like and what it was like passing or what it was like getting a partial pass 
on what it felt like failing. You know, I, I'm going to be completely honest in this series because I want people to learn from this. It's just one of those things, all right? I'm passionate about it and it's great fun. I've had the best time of my life doing it, but it's bloody hard, but it's also bloody rewarding. And let's face it, nothing's rewarding if it isn't hard, you know? So there we go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. There's loads of vlogs coming up. Um, with, with, the, with loads of stuff that we're doing. I'm filming in a Cold War bunker next week uh, for this channel and also you're going to be the first guys to know about this. I'm actually buying a tuk-tuk so I'm going to start doing interviews with people in a tuk-tuk but it's, it's a good like two months away from arriving yet so but I'll keep you up to date with that one as well. Anyway thanks very much for watching guys. Please hit that subscribe. Please hit that like. Comment below and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.